this drawing looks a little more uh, elaborate than it really is. I've uh, focused on the, the fountain and the gate part of it. Um, I'm going to prepare a little bit of white paint. This is a retouching white, but uh, you can use Chinese white or uh, designer color or gouache white, any water soluble white. But I just needed to get it to the right consistency so that it's ready when I need it. Here's what a number four brush for that. And I've got about a two inch brush. I'm going to wet this whole page. It's just a that's a regular watercolor painting brush. It's not a house painting brush. You'll notice the difference. House painting brushes flare to a wider edge. And that one just, it has a knife edge. <clears throat> Cobalt blue, a big moppy brush here to go on the wet paper. A little bit of burnt sienna in it to gray it. I want a, just kind of a cool gray distant background. mix the values a little bit. This is going to dry a lot lighter. Just don't want them all the same color back there. I'm not too worried about getting uh, paint on the gate or the fountain. That's all going to be painted over top. I've got a lot of foliage around too, so I uh, put a bit of uh, rossy in it and a touch of cadmium yellow here. It's a little bit strong, but I just want to make sure I don't get, you know, another batch of just one kind of green. Grays and greens I like to uh, vary a lot so I don't get large areas of any one particular color. This is just a bit of ultramarine and burnt sienna. For the grays on the, and I've added a little touch of cadmium red to that same mixture. It's not terribly red, but I just want it to complement the greens. They're still all pretty earthy colors here, but I'm very, I'm still conscious about whether I'm going in the direction of greens or red. If I lift that out maybe it won't be so strong that yellow or maybe I can add a bit of uh, other patches so it's not just a lonely hot green in that spot I just keep referring back and get ideas from it. I'm not copying that exactly. Obviously, you can't do that when you're working on wet paper. It just it's a it's kind of a sword fight. You respond to what's happening on the paper, and you kind of at the corner of your eye look at your reference for ideas. You don't want to stray too far, but you just know you have to improvise. I think this is a lot more fun than sitting and doing a, a photographic rendering or just copy inch by inch. This is a little more demanding on the uh, imagination. Uh, this back, this top area didn't seem quite dark enough. I want to put in a little bit of extra blue darks in and around where I expect my whites to go. Seem to be not enough contrast. Now, go back to that tray where I mixed up my white. Paper's still wet. And this way I can get that white paint, which normally looks like a mistake added on later. If I put a little bit in 
while the paper's wet, it blends in much better. So I'm going to follow the pattern of the water I expect to be coming down from this fountain. And I got the ripples in the pond where it splashes down. Putting a little dark in between them too to get a bit more contrast. But I don't want to go too dark because my fountain, the, the body part of the fountain is going to be dark. I just need a little more contrast to that. And maybe flip in a few light branches while the paper's still wet. Just, just to give a bit of depth in the background. Probably put a few darker ones in as well. It's a little too white. Paper's still white enough, I can get a few dark, soft branches and tree trunks. Got a few flower pots around here too, so I want to acknowledge them while the paper's still wet. It just makes this is just a bit of green that I've used with the um, cobalt and the uh, raw sienna. Don't want to kill all the whites, but I can go back in there and retrieve with my white paint after it dries. have this, all this uh, foliage in the foreground too that should hopefully give a bit of more, more dimension to the perspective. Same bit of cadmium yellow Bit of fallow blue. I think this dark foreground will help help send your attention to the lights in the center. Now, just a bit of. Uh, Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. My old trusty combination for any kind of grays, whether they're blue grays or warm grays. It's a number one brush just for drawing this detail. I don't want to have it like pen lines. I'm trying to skip and get a bit of light and dark. So I'm trying to be careful, to, not so much to get photographic realism, but just not get pen line looking marks. And I just want to go back to my bit of white paint. It's dried pretty much. I got to wet it and try and revive it a little bit just so I can put highlights on this gate. Just along this top edge, it gives it just a nice little bit of dimension. Now the paper's totally dry, so it's just going to give me a hard edge. And if it's too hard, I'll smudge it.
doesn't need much, just a little bit to kind of make it sparkle. Now back to my ultramarine with burnt sienna. Dry paper here to get those hard edges. Now I'll look more carefully at my reference just to get ideas for the shapes. I've drawn a fair bit of detail into it, so I've got something to follow here, but I don't want to make it photographic either. So I'll slow down and keep the brush strokes kind of simple. Uh, there's a bunch of these flower pots surrounding the little pond, so I don't want to get them too complicated either. I put a little bit of red into my mixture. Here again, I won't, maybe a bit of orange will help. Give it sort of a terracotta look. Don't want to get fancy though with these because there there'll be distractions for the main star of the show there, which is supposed to be the water in the fountain. Cut around this trunk coming out of the foreground pot. I can go back in with the same color I was using ultramarine and burnt sienna. Just two layers always goes twice as dark because watercolor being transparent. Just to give that a little more dimension. It's not really catching the sunlight. I'm going to overlap the, the gate and some of these other shapes just with leaves and branches from the plants. I'll be a little bit more careful um, near the edge where they come together, but then I can just splash them around and almost let it disintegrate as it goes towards the edge. This also helps you to control where people are going to see where their attention goes and a little bluer combination will push some shapes back and I have the same problem down here in the foreground just having more detailed shape near the center of attention and then letting them just kind of disintegrate as they go towards the edges. Now, Back to my white, just want to do a little refinement here. I don't want to cover up the soft whites we got, but I just want to get my highlights back now. There's always going to be a few sharp edge splashes mixed in with the soft blurry ones in it where the water moves more. Also the option of using dry brush now. 
which I'll do just over top of the parts of the fountain. So as the, you can feel the, the paint run out. If you get too much, you can wipe a little out. I just want that sketchy line. Sort of see through. And that's it finished.